Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video by yours truly. I am live right now. Chat, say hi to YouTube. We're going to be reacting to the latest and greatest Honkai Star Rail tournament that I uh, participated in along with EO. EO was my partner. We went against God, Doggo, and Moon. And I want to provide a little bit of context before we get into the tournament so that you guys have a good understanding with regards to uh, the band phase, uh, the rules, and you know all the specifics so you can understand the value of each team composition, why we chose them how things turned out and yada, yada, yada. YouTube, I wanna go over the point system of Pride Win. This is pretty much designed to keep like spending in check, pay to win variables in check. So if you're going up against somebody in the tournament and they have like, I don't know, E5 characters or whatever, generally the the, the comment section and the feedback's gonna be, well, of course that team won. It, they had these, you know, high invested characters, whereas, whereas the other team, you know, they was they was mint picking, so to speak. Uh, also, shout out to Hoyaverse for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this tournament and enabling me to bring this to y'all y'all's attention. But yeah, let's go ahead and go over some of this stuff, the point system rules, so that it makes sense. Each team gets thirty points to spend on five star characters. We're right here, by the way. Signature light cones, their super impositions, and their eidolons. All five star characters chosen cost two points. So no matter the five star character, bare minimum, two point cost. Higher super impositions and eidolons cost a variety of additional points depending on their power level. Uh, four star characters, light cones and herta uh, store light cones do not cost points, right? Four star characters, light cones and herta store light cones do not cost points. I think eidolons do though. But some stronger four star characters do cost points. For every six points under 30, a team's final total is they have one total cycle subtracted off their score. So for every six points under 30, you get one cycle subtracted off your total cycle. So let's say you have a five cycle clearage, right? But you have 12 points under the 30 point threshold. Now you have a three cycle clearage. Does that make sense? That's important to take into consideration too. For every two points over 30, an additional cycle is added to your final score. So this is where the whales and the spenders start taking L's. So if you have 34 points, your team, your team's investment costs 34 points, that means you lose two cycles, right? So that's, that's important too. Here's the next important thing, all right? So four stars, Eidolon E0 to E6, 0.5 points, right? 0.5 points for a four star character, uh, E0 to E6. If you're just a four star with no Eidolons is 0.5, or I mean, it's just no points at all. And I think if you go to like closer you are to E6, it's just a 0.5. So whatever, we'll just say a four star character costs 0.5 points. A five star character at E0 costs two points. A five star character at E1 costs six points. A five star character at E2 costs 10 points. Nobody in this tournament has a, a E2, so we're just gonna stop here. E1 costs six points. That's important to take into consideration. Then we move down here to the light cones. Light cones at four star and herd of store cost zero points, but signature and standard light cones cost two points. That's pretty much all we need to, uh, to know. Now we can go and look at the tournament and the investment, and you guys will understand why I brought this up, because it's pretty huge. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the tournament. Yukon Blade sounds rough. Uh, actually, it's not that bad. I, I recommended it to EO because if you, but here's the thing, it's very hard if you don't know how to pull off her Wombo combo. Yukon Blade is not a bad combo, but you have to know how to time her ult with his basic, his ult, and his follow-up attack. And if you time that shit perfectly, it's actually a pretty damn strong combo. All right. All right, here we are with... So he has 163 speed sparkle. One, side one, we he could have gotten the three turner in if he had the sprightly von whack on her that's that's the first thing i think off rip here if he had sprightly von whack he at least could have gotten the three turner in on the first cycle i'm not sure if it would have saved him one i think it would have been possible in the team of sparkle yukon and he has a signature light cone okay oh we got to tally this stuff up by the way so he has so right now his sparkle is e0 with signature light cone that's four points yukon blade and a lynx now like i said definitely Wait, go back. I told him I was actually the Yukong person who tried to get him to play. put the uh, the dance, dance, dance on his Yukong to try and save him, you know, get an extra turn in. And a Lynx. Now, like I said, definitely see the synergy with. But I think he just didn't have enough investment in his team. Lynx in the blade. Let me go back and look at that one more time. Ugh. This is another problem here. Your Yukong can actually pop off on some ult. I talked to him about this as well. Unfortunately for EO, he just doesn't have Yukong invested in, rightfully so. I, I honestly, I feel him on that. But his Yukong could have done some serious damage 
if he had an uh, uh, invested Yukong. Like 70 over 120 Yukong can hit can hit pretty goddamn hard. A blade and a lynx now like i said definitely see the synergy with lynx in the okay so this is a four star character so 4.5 points so far for eo blade in this one but the yukong is now blade signature light cone that's another four points in total unless he has e1 blade which i don't think he does that's 8.5 points in total of a misfit to me here can you also that blade is pretty solid bro blade and a lynx now like i said definitely see to me here can you pick anything up from this one yeah that Ruro? blade's pretty solid what was this crit value again 76 over 184 then once the uh, the passive yeah, of the set kicks in here can you pick anything up from this one yeah bro his blade is solid no this is definitely a very interesting slow speed blade which is fine combination of units vulcan of course yukong known for her massive 80 percent increased attack buff on and that's some free to play friendly ass shit there bro <laughs> So nine points for EO's team in total. Nine points. Her skill, but Blade can't really make use. All right, so we open up, and the first person is gonna be Lynx. That's very interested to see what yep. he was put the HP boost on Blade, off, increasing his aggro and his damage a little bit. Blade increasing his chance to be hit and boost Blade straight up with that sparkle. Sparkle, he is ready yep. To go here. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious to see what kind of damage we get out of this. So blade. this this run is painful, by the way, guys. There's a lot of RNG revolving around this run being being performed well. You got to rely on Blade getting hit. First attack, 71. And if you time things correctly, you want Blade to get hit, but you want him to still not trigger his follow-up attack until Yukong's ult is up. Okay, on the cleave. It's quite respectable. So we are going to get some decent damage. And I'm curious to see what he does with this so that's Yukong. four. Whether he spams skill. And see, that and is actually unfortunate. To gain access to that because you want to save that follow-up for when Yukong's ult is up. You know what I mean? And one of the things that people underestimate about Yukong is the more actions you go... During her uh, her buff, her skills activation, she gets a little bit increments of energy recharge increase. So you can actually fill her ult up and then use it in the same like instance of Blade's full wombo combo. Ult. We got a big 145k follow up there from the Blade. So watch Yukong's energy recharge down here when Lynx goes. Well, with the ultimate ready, but yes. See, did you, did you see that? Did you see that, bro? <laughs> That bad boy filled up big time. I'll go back again so y'all can see it. Look, look at this. There from the blade as well with the ultimate ray. Nope. That's a massive energy recharge increase. So now if he pops Link's ult and heals Blade up, Yukong's ult will be up. And if he did and if Blade didn't get hit that first time, he could have done a full wombo combo with his blade. Yes, the Yukong is the with the with the Yukong ult. Super curious to see what happens in So look, now her ult's up. But he doesn't have a follow-up attack. That's what's unfortunate. One. Your slow-mo Acheron ults were fine. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. they're nice. But it see, this like is this is crazy because if he would have had that follow-up attack right here, that would have been a lot of damage. Then should cast but it's an RNG pain in the ass. That's what I'm trying in in EO's defense. Okay, to those ads summoned by that shield man there, and hopefully take out this life leech effect here. Okay, we're going with the ultimate here straight from Yukon. We're going for a big attack here on Blade, and we're gonna smash out that ultimate fully buff. 116. 116. Mm, that's it. That's all right. E, that's a high. Hey, very nice. Triggering that MOC buff there, getting that Trotter debuff. Definitely. I'm 81. Yeah, that damage not is like. Have the damage to do it in zero cycles this way, but I definitely think the one cycle is. So Blade only went two times. And he didn't get a follow up attack with the enhanced Yukong buff because Sparkle didn't go three times. So I'll be honest. Yeah, man, it's doable. Perfectly it's safe. just really, it's, you really got to know what you're doing. Enemies down to, but the big man is going to heal himself up with that one. It's not easy, though. I'm telling you guys, this shit is not easy at all. Backup. Yukong did get a little bit low on that one, uh, but we're looking pretty fine. And that's the great thing with this team. You can spam as many skills as you want with Yukong and Lynx because you've just got an abundance of them. And Blade doesn't really use too many. Absolutely, a little bit unfortunate. We did have Blade to getting hit a lot though. Enemy there here. But see, another one where Yukong's ult is almost up, but it right? Looks like we're gonna get and Blade follows cover. up without her ult or her oh, buff yeah. again. Full attack, 164k from Blade, and he does look to have quite a lot of energy. Just here. nasty so RNG he has to deal with. Another ultimate straight up here. Let me, uh, let me, let me move my camera up just a little bit and make myself a little bit. There we go. Okay. We're gonna get that wind break there and. Hopefully it'll be triggered by the Trotter. It is a nice big chunk of damage there. 
Can we get it done? This cycle low here, Vulcan. We've got another sparkle boost coming up. Yeah, I think the sparkle boost is going to keep us I think EO played it relatively well, though, man. You know, at the end of the day, bro, do you want to deal with the RNG of this shit or do you just want to try and get a realistic clear? And I think EO presented this this comp, what it's going to achieve on a consistent basis. Whether we want to use some of these ults or rely entirely on the blade skill because we will not have access to... Oh, he does get the dot trigger, so he will get his follow-up here. So between the Yukon the blade skill and the follow-up we should get the kill and not have to rely on this ultimate so he should be able to get it done it's going to be a little bit tight he is checking where exactly he is at at the moment this is pretty important dog ah because like i said with with good timing guys he could he could have killed these two and then saved his ult and auto for the next wave, right? Which can exp can definitely save a cycle. See the damage from this follow up. Get it done. We do have the horse taking. Look at this. Look at this annoying shit. We'll be able to finish it off anyway. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, so he Getting did save his ult. Never mind. He saved it. He still got to save play. it. Getting nice. The first cycle done in one cycle is very, very good as well. Sorry, the first wave there. So Dude, we're those dot ticks on blade are like god tier. And set a great time, hopefully. Yeah, definitely good poised, uh, well poised with the ultimates on that one. Being pop able to the, pop the ult from O'Girl. Uh, with that follow-up attack into the dot. He is Get Blade more healing. Blade all the time. Uh, and not sure exactly what he's looking for. Maybe turns left. Uh, wait, 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 what though, the? Because he's got abundance of skill points. Why didn't he heal right there? That would have been more damage. His Blade's ult wasn't maxed out. What he's the dot. He is definitely checking. Yeah, his Blade's ult is at 7,995. He's blade all the time. Uh, Wait, am I tripping? Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it is capped. Uh, Maybe I'm waffling. Sure exactly what he I feel like he should have healed blade right there with his links. Uh, it doesn't really matter though because he's got abundance of skill points. Get that big ult for 74k into the basic attack for 66. Quite respectable. Need it does 90%, right? Okay. That's why That's what I was saying. Was that 90% though? Y'all can do the math real quick. I'm not sure. That's why I said maybe I'm tripping. In this one, I would assume. Absolutely. Okay, the swords are out here and blade very strategic. I haven't I seen a like real Eo legitimate five charges wombo combo boom, between Yukong Kong and Blade yet. Perfectly planned by Eo there. Take All his follow-ups have been out of synchronization with Yukong. Kong. Yeah, that was perfect. Which again, I, it's yeah, not necessarily Eo's fault. It's like RNG type ordeal and, and a bit of calculation as well. You're just gonna destroy them with Blade. Also, getting that trotter down at the same time was super clutch. Getting those extra dot applications. Now we are gonna move in. Yeah, see, this is gr this is grimy, man. This is grimy. Into the next cycle, but can we clear it in this next cycle? That is going to be the question. Okay, a very interesting use of Yukong Ultimate here. Oh, this you just butchered your Yukong ult, though. Holy shit, that was grimy to watch. We will have Lynx Oof. and Sparkle up next. I'm thinking Yeesh. that you might want to break here or something like that because he did go ahead and use that fairly early there. Well, you do seem to be cooking a pretty big turn here on Blade with that ultimate available and almost Yeah, ready. the biggest problem with this comp is just like yeah, he's, gonna... he's fucking dealing with Yukong's insanely high uh, uh, skill cap, bro. <laughs> RNG cap. Didn't queue up the ultimate. Didn't queue it up straight away. Like Yukong is so sure wonky, man. He's going for here. Uh, is he gonna save the ultimate? Okay, he mm. is saving the ultimate. Okay, he's trying to queue up his follow up. Maybe Ugh. I'm not too sure. It feels like a lot of wasted energy there. That it must be a bigger brain play than what I can comprehend. Can you see what's going on with that ultimate on Blade? Mm, I think he's maybe waiting for the ultimate from Sparkle, potentially waiting for that damage boost to try and get a bigger ultimate. That yeah, way, I mean, I the rotations are completely scuffed at this point. I'm not 100% sure, but that Trotter is getting low here, so we are going to get a pretty big uh, damage burst here on Yang Ching because he already has a wind shear, a bleed, and a burn on him. Definitely. So there is that Sparkle ultimate of going in to boost the blade. Does he finish off right here? 100% expect to see that ult come straight away. Unless he's waiting for next I'll be honest with you. This shit is like absolutely... No, okay. There it is. He does get it off. Absolutely doable do with some RNG and some, some timed Yukong ult. How much dot damage do we get? With some timed Yukong ults, it's doable, but... Ugh. Yeah, I don't okay, know. Not too bad on the 58k, but it's not going to be enough to get him down in this cycle. You but have the, 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 the most important thing about this is you have to just time absolutely. Yukong with well, Blade's wombo combo. Remaining here, and it does look like we're going to absolutely get one turn here from Sparkle. But the question is, are we going to get two turns from Sparkle? And is that going to be enough to take Yangqing out here in this very last cycle and get that really fast clear time?
And we're not going to get the second sparkle in there. So we it's going to rely on doing this one. We do get the follow-up, which is going to be a big addition. And, and then Yukon's DDD is going to activate, I imagine. Nine percent left. Can we oh. get it here? Oh, oh and Blade is All right, spam so that close, hill. so close to that ultimate as well. We're going to pop the Yukong ult. See what we can get out of this damage. Let me turn this I over a little bit more. We might be just a little bit there short. And that no. energy loss. Oh, there it That's is. The dance, dance, dance. Yep. I did not the see it. The DDD. The 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 power dance, of dance. DDD is Super insanity. Getting in there, allowing Sparkle to boost Blade into this cycle. Going to get the skill. Going to be buffed. As well by sparkle and then we're gonna go straight into the alt and that should be a hundred percent enough to get this done okay Ooh, definitely very very nice I'm gonna finish the ching off and hp boot blade nice here. here we are with all right let's look at this okay so right now as things stand eo three cycle team investment nine points now we have team investment off rip what i see on the screen is four eight twelve four eight twelve and then twelve point five here we go T team two a side one god doggos running the composition of locha bronya imbibita lune and hanya what do you make of this one grimo I'm looking at 12.5 i am shocked vulcan i highly expected imbibita to be on side two taking on and there's the e1 bronya eight points bronya Eight points of Imbiber Lune and Lorcha. That's 16.5 points. Sam, but here he is, ready to dominate side one. In addition to that, this team looks pretty rough in terms of skill points. Running Bronya and Inhibitor is no Okay, skill joke with uh, Hanya off rip. Straight with a Bronya. First time, Inhibitor full charge. Huge Inhibitor. That's beautiful. 200k. That's beautiful. Yeah, definitely on Bro got the one point back while doing the full charge. That was nice. Slow Inhibitor. But are going to get that extra damage out of him. Uh, and yeah, skill points is going to be the issue. We do have Hun RNG. This is what I call RNG luck. Branya getting hit and getting her ult up right here. Massive. Massive. To alleviate, but we do have to play around with it very carefully uh, to make sure we don't run out of skill points. Three points Before gave him back. Very nice. To try and generate an extra one along the way. So here we go. Hanya Bro, that speed, speed boost up. is I don't insane. Think it's going to be too effective here on the Imbibita Lune. All right. He's not going to overlap the Bronya. Oh, wait. Did the E1 proc? I think it's going to be too The E1 proc on Bronya? It did. Did not, not the consume a skill point. Did not consume a skill point. Buffing him beyond the belief with all these buffs and hopefully that's massive for uh imbiber lune we can get some massive damage just trying to choose his primary target uh on whether he wants to try and kill the ads or not or focus down this horse looks like we're going to be going for the horse just taking time to decide looking at the break bars i think because we can break I was waiting on Christmas with the Hanya on the next turn. If we do go the horse, but we go to just hit everything. We do have the alt three 246 K skill. We're getting that alt. Now, is it an E2 Imbibita? That's what I'm not sure. And that's what two we bro. Hanya is so good with Imbibita Lune. Wow. This is nice. I like this. Hanya. So no I mean, we knew it, right? We knew it, but damn two point. Another point given back to, to him right during here. his ult. No, it is not. No, but oh my goodness, how is this Bronya getting another turn? She's already had two. And then, then Lorcha is showing his value, which we knew he's best in slot healer for Bible Lune outside of Scooby Doo. But like, yeah, Scooby Doo is better. But still, Lorcha's skill point funneling, you cannot sleep on it from Bible Lune. Getting a third one. Is this going to be a zero cycle wave one? This is just a pure hot wheel. Did that act? Did, what, did he third activate Bronya's shit again? Or no? Wave one? This is just oh no! Okay, it didn't activate that time. It didn't Bronya activate that time. Taking another one, and I think we can get this done. Massive 197k, getting that first wave done. And Bible Lune went cycles. three times, didn't he? My goodness, Imbibitor Lune really Very nice. showing his stuff here. But take a look at our skill points here. E1 Vulcan. has a cooldown, does it? I'm not sure. Dicey. We only have two. I don't have E1 Branya. Attack here on Hanya. If we do, we're gonna have to take a turn off from Imbibitor Lune. A very tough call. Yeah, definitely, because you need to spend that point to get one back. So it puts you in that awkward situation. Turn cooldown. Okay, got gotcha. you. On this team to generate some extra skill points, but it's just not going to be enough uh, for what we need to do. So can see if we use the Bronya basic here into triple uh, Imbibitor. All right, here we go. Oh, Bronya's okay. about to. Well, it definitely looks like he's probably going to auto attack right here. Is he going to going for a skill potentially? I mean, Bronya does have her ultimate almost available, uh, so maybe we we'll get an extra skill point from that. I haven't been. Really I would probably not. auto okay, attack skill, here. I'll be honest with basic, you. Mm, it's a very I'm, tough call. I'm thinking two points. 
Nah, you got auto attack here, big dog. Get basics to play, then you can do a triple stacked in Bibita, and then absolutely her next turn up quicker. But that's yeah, an auto, bro. A pickle, that is not. The yeah, there you go. Probably does get her ultimate. Okay, there we go. We get a triple stack on the Embibber Lune. That is the safe play because then we're going to generate another skill point from the Hanya skill. Then we're going to generate another one from Lochi using his basic attack. And then we can use the Bronya skill into Embibber Lune on the next turn. So I'm not too sure whether he's thinking about going for the Trotter there. I or would harsh like that ult. I wouldn't uh, use it just yet. Embibber's ultimate up as well. Probably going to wait for the next Bronya turn to get that buff and the ultimate buff before we use that ultimate. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could really use it right now, time here but really I think I'd hostage it. It's not easy playing this team. Absolutely not. Going to invest that skill point here in Hanya. Now we are... Hanya old up again? Nice. Hanya old up again? Here. Oh, my God. That was RNG again. <laughs> Holy... The skill point here in Hanya. Bro, now he hit Hanya and filter ult up. In a pretty oh, situation that's beautiful. Here. We're going we gonna to use Bronya's skill here, because if we do, we still won't have enough skill points to use in Bibita's three enhanced base. Well, he gets he a skill back from... Uh, oh, it's a okay, this is an interesting situation. He's going to get a skill back by attacking this person. He can attack the person with Imbiber to Lune ult, get a skill back, and get two charges. He can do this. And if Brian's stuff is off cooldown, it's even better. So skill, ult, you, he's good to go. Tough call. I don't know how copium this is, but could he perhaps use Hanya on Yep, Hanya look at that. Look at that speed, speed boost. To get her like an Dude, the RNG cycle. of this okay, run is insane. Copium. I didn't know he was speed syncing. I thought maybe it could be a thing, uh, but it looks like we are just going to go play it safe. Ult. Using it on Imbibida. Ooh. And then Bronya if Branya would have been able to auto attack and still get inside the cycle that would have been nasty work He's once again probably gonna have to basic nah. i don't know she doesn't have to basic no she doesn't Bulk. that went over your head brother situation. pop ult but being at a zero pop i assume ult. it is or a one skill we've got to make our decisions you're now. good to I go using the bronya ult is the play but even with he basic i don't think we actually we can basic with bronya yep oh because we would have Why didn't he fucking pop ult? The luck, the the E1 trigger, yeah, yeah, no, the tree, E1 trigger is insane. But why didn't he just pop ult? Would have got the extra skill point from the ult on Imbibita Lune, which then would have had us at three skill points to allow Imbibita to use the three point uh, basic. All right, here he so is. He's about to get a skill point back from ult. Damage we do get out of this ult, but that this was a, I think that was a misplay. A tricky team to play with managing these skill points. Absolutely, but two points it seems that we did have uh, an additional way to gain skill points here because there we it is. Have yep, an extra skill point left over gets an extra turn on Lune by using it now. So I think this is either an S1 Bronya or an E1 Bronya there because we were able to get out of that pickle there pretty easily, which is absolutely fantastic here. Making use of those Eidolons on Bronya or the signature, I wasn't paying She went up in action order? But definitely getting does he have four-piece hacker space? Yeah, he probably does. Oh, so he's probably... He... Squamish, thanks for saying. Okay, that would make sense. I see what y'all are putting ultimate. down now. I'm picking yeah, it up. I don't know where that bonus skill point I'm picking from, it up. Maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention, but that is... I want to watch that again, actually. Hold up. I want to watch that again because that that if that's the case, that was huge. Actually, we can basic with Bronya. Ooh, because we would have got the extra skill. Oh, the, the hacker space put his Bronya in front of Yang King. Three skill points. It did. Look, Bibber look, look. To use the three. Put it in front. Put her in front of uh, Yang King. Basic. So curious to see here how much damage we. Nice. Extra sank to squamish thanks for sack though if I could try and look at this Hanya look at this Hanya Lorcha combo the name of it two skill points ultimate. generated blah, yeah, blah. I don't know where that bonus skill point came from or maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention but that is super solid we did oh, well, get the oh he's saving it for okay on the it's important that Imbiber to Lune is the one who triggers Hanya's uh skill point generation because he gets a damage bonus from doing it Lune, which is absolutely fantastic but like I said there's so many things to manage in this team composition to try and get it done uh I think this is one of those you're, situations you're right where me you should still be before Yang Chi and Branya ulti before you're right. On the yeah, I don't know why he I don't know why he did that. Attack and because Branya's ult last based off of how many times the guy, the 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 freaking the unit uses their uh their ability, not based off of how many times she goes. Can we get Bronya up quicker. It is super tricky. Even with that Hanya seeming to be a skill point generator, it's just not enough to reliably cycle through these two characters.
Yes, absolutely. We could use the Luocha ultimate here to gain an extra skill point, but that still wouldn't give us enough to use Bronya's skill. Bro is three, bro is and really is activating. Basic here. So it's definitely oh, it's bro is out here activating his his thoughts, bro, this and still get enough. Bro's activating uh, his fucking uh, match what Xavier, bro, from X Men composition. Yeah, so it's it's such a torn decision, and I don't know why he's targeting the Trotter when we can, if when on his basic he can attack Yang Ching and uh, generate that skill. Actually, blame the editor on this one, bro. The editor so could have edited this sure part out. Play is there. Maybe he's gonna trigger it with Locha and just trying to get more. He missed out on like thirty five energy. Well, that's what I was trying to say earlier. To see oh, you're explaining it to somebody. Is, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. I don't know. That's a lot of energy. Moves ahead. He's thinking on this one, but I'm tipping it's a few. But we can see if we do use the basic, Bronny comes back with the forty three action. So he does go ahead and use the basic on the trotter. And there we go. We have we have got the, th the skill points and we get frozen on the Bronya. Now that is, I'm curious to see where that delays her. Into, I mean, with the amount of RNG luck he's had on his side, bro, something was bound to, to happen, man. Him to boost him in this one. But dude, I am just, <laughs> I'm getting stressed on this run. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so he's going to maybe opt to go for a three enhanced basic attack here, which should give him enough energy. Doggos, brother, what the fuck are you pondering you, about? You that Let that ultimate, bitch fly. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Go ahead and get a combo with Bronya coming up here. But we are still going to be pretty tight on skill points, especially if we use this Hanya skill here. Okay, um, so we are using it. Yeah, oh, we, that yeah, was okay, clutch by Lord. To actually trigger it as well. So I think we're not in too bad situation. Unfortunately, Bronya does have to basic, but she is going to get another turn in this cycle, which is super clutch. We're going to get that extra generation here. It's a matter of what he wants to do with the Imbibra Lune, uh, because he will act before the Bronya. And <laughs> you, he wants to okay, uh, here's a, you have no skill points, brother. You have one option, and that is Q, my guy. I need you to Q, because right now, you got me sitting in a 35-minute Q. All right, I'm queued into this load screen right now, bro. I'm stun locked. Away. I'll have to let it pan out and see Hit the fucking Q. <laughs> do me a favor, bro. Hit the Q. <laughs> yeah, that basic attack Holy, like bro's and snacking on some fucking hot like Cheetos right now. I know. Bro's turns. snacking while he's doing it. He's like, <laughs> one more combo of ultimate into triple basic. Right. Going to be enough you. to finish off the game. 31% HP remains. <laughs> and we do have an inhibitor turn before Bronya goes. Yeah. Right, here, here we go, here we go. Stuff we can do. Holy. So use just an bro, I'll be honest, that Hanya ult has been massive. That Hanya ult has been massive. This whole this whole entire showcase. As well, so we can trigger that hard. Yeah, yeah, and Bobby Lune should be able to finish that off. I think Easy money. To use the ultimate, or we'll be out of bro. He has he has three skill points. A ult from Imbiber Lune plus a Hanya on his on on the dude's head. That's six skill points in total. Bronya brings him back. GG's. Like bro. Able Bronya to use her skill. The only other. There we go. Come on, man, bro. Get it out. Get yep. As well. It don't take that long, my guy. I'd be using the Lurch Alden. Holy shit! A little bit of damage I can out of this one. We're gonna have. Come on, get it in. Skill point. Hurry up. Uh, skill here. Can we? Come on, let it go, my guy. The ultimate granted. My guy. From the Bronya. Let it fly. That is going to be enough to get another three enhanced basic attack. I did completely missed that. that. That is super clutch. There it is. The you got to slow it down when you do that, though. It does. Nice. Oh, Beautiful oh run. One cycle. One cycle. All right. Here we are with All right. team one side. So two, I got Acheron and E0 gotcha with a signature light comb. With the team of Acheron. We're going to have to do the uh, Pella, the tally Kafka, up for me. And Pella it's with Resolution Shines as a pearl. Team. What concerns do you have with this one, Grimro? Well, for me, Vulcan, the only concern I really Kafka, have is, free to play build, is whether or e zero. not Sam is going to take this team out. It's all going to come down Jepard, to how defensive free to play build, universal play trend, Jepard, and how good he is at keeping up those shields. And all right, so what I want to talk to you guys about is, first of all, we got to tally this up. We got to tally this up real quick. Smack, Acheron is four points. Then we have Pella, who's 0.5 points. Then we have Kafka, who's just two points. She has a free-to-play build, so that's six. So we're at 6.5. Then we have Japard, who's two points. 7.5, 8.5. My team investment is 8.5 points. EO's nine. I'm 8.5. Minus 30, 12.5. You know what this means, guys? We save ourselves two cycles because divided by six, see that? We save ourselves two cycles here. So 
Two cycles are saved. All right, now we can go ahead and get into this. My Acheron was a slow Acheron. If I had the right build, I would have made her go twice, but I didn't have the build for her to go fast enough to go twice. The biggest problem with my team composition, you guys, is I don't have anybody in the team to amplify the speed of the team, except if I put a hacker space four piece set on Japar. It still wouldn't have closed the gap. So the weakness of this team was the fact that I had no speed manipulation. So I had to make sure Every single one of these units could go twice outside of Acheron. At all times. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully we do have the burn cone on him so that he can keep applying those burns, giving Acheron stacks. But we do have a very solid team. Solid two RNG there, Acheron two stacks. Two Universal Trend on Japard gave my Acheron two stacks because they hit Japard twice. Stacks. And we did just get a stack on that AOE. Open up one turn Acheron Pella ult, put that. defensive straight on everyone's heads. Skill generate that extra stack. And that's the only debuff that, that can make my Acheron stronger on this team, so there's no need to even hostage her ult. Once nine Crimson Knot stacks is on everyone's heads, debuffs on their heads, the pop Absolutely off. Absolutely love to see this. 90k, 172k, 284k, Why do you put Gepi in the middle? Skill issue. Into the 555. Misplay. 5k. Gotcha smack fucking sucks. Straight away, wasting. What the fuck is this guy? Is he a is he a real thing? He's not a real Hawkeye Star Rail player, is he? No time. So he's not a real Hawkeye Star Rail player. In that damage, I don't care how long. Ah! Been ah! I didn't even so notice that, bro. I'm keeping a buck with you, brother. Up. Didn't Absolutely. even notice. This is a badass unit, no questions about it. And the question is probably going to be on my mind is can we get this done in So Vulcan called this out. Y'all saw I yeah, auto attack with that her. Akron ultimate real quick. Vulcan's gonna call it and out. I can see by the turn order here, she appears to be on attack percent boots. So Minus four K gonna get another move here, Vulcan, but it doesn't look like she needs it. No, and I just wanted to make note of that really nice basic attack used by Akron to proc the additional follow-up by Kafka to activate her ult. It was the energy she needed, and I thought that was a great play. Yeah, so I, I didn't skill with Acheron because I saw that uh, Kafka had her passes up, passive up. Volk is pretty meticulous a uh, player. Um, so I auto with uh, Acheron so that Kafka could then follow up, give her an extra Nihility debuff, and then it filled Kafka's ult up, allowing her to ult and break shield. So it was really nice. But Vulcan, I'm telling you guys, I, I told y'all this every tournament. Vulcan tries to pretend like he's a casual, but bro is 100% a hardcore gamer. Uh, to use that basic just purely for that synergy. Oh, absolutely. So we do have an Acheron ultimate almost available here, but Sam is already going in on this team. Pella is at half health, and I'm not seeing a Japan ultimate so, anywhere on side. No, Japan is lagging in the energy, so we're just going to have... <laughs> this is 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 actually an L. I would have preferred these nine stacks to be on Sam for more damage, but it is what it is. Lean on the damage and see what we can do. Looks like he's trying to take care of the ad uh, uh, to not get. The reason I didn't stress about it, guys, is because one cycling with this team was near impossible with the investment that I have on it. Get the break with the Chapad, so we're going straight to the Sam, hitting him with that skill. I did make another misplay, though. I'll point it out. Dots, nothing crazy, straight into the ultimate, and then we're already back around to Akron, sitting at four stacks currently. We do have the robot broken, which is super handy, but keen to see what we can do out of this one. We got a 45k skill, nothing too phenomenal there, but as we start ramping up, I think we will get some. Nice, nice out of this next alt with that enemy going down Japard's shield is just so that was the misplay hold up let's go back i've taught people this before and i'm going to teach all that again once sam does this hey skill nothing too this is very important five of these bad boys every time you use a skill it takes away a skill to deal damage by the way it takes away one of these stacks and if you get rid of all these stacks, it obliterates his shield. And then you get a vulnerability buff. I misplayed by not capitalizing on getting this shit down as fast as possible so that my Acheron's ult can deal maximum damage. This is, I don't think, I still don't think it would have made a difference with my team's investment, but I possibly, maybe, maybe could have saved myself a cycle. And that's a, that's a strong maybe. I still think my team was way too like, uh, 
out like this team there. was not strong but enough as we start ramping up i think we will get some nice damage out of this next ult with that enemy going down Japard's shield so i auto attack the there right now. i think that auto attack's fine and that is a massive lifeline for this team we, we we do have the reduced healing so the shielding is a good effect but we're rolling straight into this ult that's why dhil is the best to go against them yeah and 36 yeah so if y'all don't know oh I and in Bybur Lune, if he does three, if he does his full like charge basic attack. That shit counts as three of those, which is broken. Absolutely okay. We are so uh, Kafka did a skill right there. Hold on, I missed some stuff. My guys, I was I think talking. We'll get some nice damage out of this next ult with that enemy going down. Japard's shield is just around the corner now. He is about to proc it, and Hold that up. is a um, my bad guys. I went too far uh, uh, uh like back. Okay, here we go. Now, did Japart do his stuff? But we're rolling straight into this ultimate with Acheron, getting a hundred. There we go. Yeah, see, look, I auto attacked with Japart right there. That shit is so annoying. The if I would have skilled with Japart, that would have been four stacks remaining. Oh, absolutely. Three okay, stacks we remaining. Are burning though, Vulcan. Three so stacks remaining. That shield up at all times here, or we are going to be in trouble. Now, fortunately, Japart puts the shield up here, but it's almost already going to be gone here from the massive wombo combo attack here from Sam. So right. I mean, this is looking very dangerous. Two stacks it remaining. Dangerous, but I like to see it. it's just an all out race. auto attack. Not fine. Just about anything else except pumping out as much damage as possible. And then I skill with those set, two. We are going to have the ultimate from Pelo. And he, his shield would have been broken. Shred, and then my Acheron stack, ults him when his shield's broken. Kafka, once again, maybe. You know, maybe we could have saved ourselves something. And we should be able to get ourselves a big ult. Do we want to skill with the Japan? Yeah, see, this ult right here should have been saved after I broke his shield down range, but, we are but like i said i i don't think i would have been able to pull off a one cycle with this team investment into 243k now we have sam below half health but he still does have about half of his break bar remaining oh yeah scale so scale like right here is what i should have done to get to Japan. ultimate scale yep, right two stacks left out up there online immediately we do also have kafka's ultimate here so the thing i'm looking for now vulcan is can we break this sam yep. and turn his fire off so our team stops burning alive Definitely. So not too bad. I think we are going to be pretty safe with this one. We are going to hit, get hit by the next attack, but we are going to be safe from it. One stack remaining. So bros, bros, yeah, man. Bros I don't know. He's he's at 32% remaining. Shield, uh, to get that up. It's possible, but who knows? If didn't have that shield, we would have been out of action. Oh, absolutely. So using that skill very strategically on your part is really paying off here. And it does look like we are trying to line up a break here on Sam. Oh, if only we could. Oh, there it is. Yeah, actually very that, nice. That was his stacks running out. I think we are pretty what much sucks, though, is that shafted by Kafka from now. breaking his yeah, shield. Snow drum is now. It's just about how quick we can get this damage out. Unfortunately, Akron doesn't, doesn't matter. We ended up finishing turn until just after the next cycle. So we're not going to be able to do it this cycle. But I am seeing a possible. Is it two cycle clear we're up to? We'll put it on the screen at the end. But Black Swan sure is 100% better clear. than Kafka in this situation. Dominate. Oh, but oh not even close. Forgot, has her ultimate not even close. Black Swan's Kafka way better than Kafka on this team. It's gonna be enough to take that 23% here, along with Kafka's move. Oh, just short. There it is, and the explosion. <laughs> Vulcan got bamboozled. The pig into the dot tick. Got it. Yeah, you're right. I was got about the dot. Attention to the stacks, and we get it done. So, me and EO's five cycles. When we throw in the the, the point system right here is actually a three cycle clear right so uh undercover brothers three cycle clear by the point system by the point system you guys okay so now we're on destiny we're gonna add up all of her points and then we'll be able to see what their total investment was but off the top of of my head we already see signature light con on black swan signature light con on silver wolf signature light con on acheron and Scooby-Doo does not have a signature light cone down there. Okay, so off the top, we're already at 444. Four, four. That's 12 points off the top. All right. But here we go with our final contestant, Team 2, Side 2. We have Moon running the team of Acheron, Black Swan, Silver Wolf, and Ho Ho. Once again, this side, we do have a pretty synergy. Boom. Now things get interesting. The E1 Silver Wolf. And that E1 Black Swan bumps things up a notch. Oh, yes. So let's come back over here to the point system. Uh, so we got, we got Black Swan, eight points in total because of the E1. Silver Wolf, eight points in total because of the E1 and Signature Light Cone. And then we have four points from uh, Acheron. And then we have two points from Scooby-Doo. That's going to total 22 points. 38.5 points in total. 
38.5 points. By the point system, guys, that's four cycles subtracted. No, not subtracted, added on to their total clear time. Being a well doesn't pay off. It doesn't. It really doesn't, bro. And I, I had told them about this beforehand, but when you add that shit up, we actually won by a mile. And I, and I want to be clear here. I still think their, their runs were fantastic, by the way, but you do need to be careful with these investments. Doggo's got a one cycle and Destiny got a one cycle. But I want to be I want to be clear here, guys. These two E1s are are very deserving of the points. This I've told y'all plenty of times. Silver Wolf's E1 is a fucking game changer for Silver Wolf. She has the worst energy recharge problems at E0 for her ult. Once you unlock her E1, the bitch ults every other turn. And, it, and that's massive for implying stacks for Acheron to ult. It's huge. Then if that wasn't enough, Black Swan's E1 is one of the most broken E1s in the entirety of the game. It rivals Ron May's ignore defense 20%, and it's even worse because Black Swan's E1, as long as they're inflicted by the dot of the element, that person gets a all-type res pin, essentially. So both her and Acheron are benefiting from her E1, as well as anybody else on the team who has a dot on them. So... If they are inflicted with a lightning dot or a wind dot, guess what? All type res pin obliterated on top of Acheron's all type res pin from her ultimate. Then you got her defensive ignoring. Then you have her signature light cone defensive ignoring it too. So these two are very fucking strong buffs. And, and that's and that's so important to point out. Silver Wolf's res pin too. You're right. Yeah, Silver Wolf also has all type res pin. So look, all type res pin Silver Wolf, all type res pin Black Swan, and then all type res pin Acheron. Then Silver Wolf Light Cone, 12% increased damage received, which is equivalent to all type res pin as well on the multipliers. So there's a lot of damage in this investment, which is why I completely think the point system is valid for this. And that's, that's very fair context provided. Logistic team, what are you thinking on this one, Grim? Oof, I think this is a fantastic. I'll team show you guys where that value myself. comes in. Silver Wolf is a huge. Fifty-seven percent res pin for Akron. It's Hopefully fucking insane. Allow for fast breaking on him to minimize damage and maximize output of your team. All right, so definitely, and we do have. So she's already done uh, Silver Wolf's skill, and then Akron. I mean, not Akron. Black Swan skill, defensive shred, and then Silver Wolf's light cone plus her all type res pin has already activated. Plenty of debuffs to apply with this team. So Thank you, Necro. Issue. We are lacking a preservation unit that can apply the extra debuffs through the burn cone, but I think with the rest. So Akron's or I keep saying Akron. God damn it! Backshot Swan, ult's already up. That's crazy. That that's due to Destiny's five head building, by the way. Backshot Swan to this team we're gonna have no issues getting one extra damage two extra breaks oh, that's a ult? and then extra stacks out of this acheron so i it's a hey uh teeny thank you for the prime sub i appreciate it Two and teeny just guys subscribe i want to talk to y'all about this the black swan ult just triggered the e1 passive of black swan that i was telling y'all about so now acheron has that all type res pen I think it's a very synergistic team, and as long as we do have enough healing out of this uh, ho -ho, we should be pretty fine. Dang. Uh, obviously so that damage you're looking at already off rip, the, the shit I was telling y'all about is already inflating those numbers significantly. The energy going amiss because we don't need it on Acheron, but still going to be huge on the Silver Wolf who does often I would not have break that. a little gap in her energy regeneration, which can maybe get made up for by the ho ho. Oh, absolutely. Very interesting to see this Acheron is a very fast Acheron compared to Gotcha Smack Slow Acheron. So it'll be curious to see which one ends up being a little bit stronger here. Well, it, it, you, that'd be an unfair comparison. You can't because of all the investment. So you can't say... Yeah, it's like that's almost that's almost pointless to make with respect, you know. And it's gonna be really critical, it seems, from this team, which I'm seeing Vulcan, to get another Acheron ultimate here. Because I'm not sure Black Swan's dots can get this. See, that, that there, that there. That is E1 Black Swan, bro. That is 100% the power of E1 Black Swan 
and and Silver Wolf's Light Cone combined. Team, which I'm seeing Vulcan to get another Astro now. Ultimate I'll be team. honest. Even I'm regular sure Black Swan probably might still kill this person. Probably. This one's dodged and get But them. this one, this next dot. Done. Look oh, at this oh, next dot. I want to show y'all this one. Actually, that was some this damage. he would have still been alive if this was my Black Swan. This is what. This is E1 Black Swan, bro. Because every single dot has her all type res pin, bro. Every single one of those dots. And look, guys, this is before the break. Look, 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 look. Her, her dot hasn't occurred yet. Her dot's about to occur here at the end. Look, look, look. Space to see. Dang. <laughs> so you got to take into consideration that all type res pin on every single dot on the character is insanity. You take all that off. And now he has another turn and he's forced to probably use his Acheron. Oh, or he, I'm, I'm sorry, she. I'm used to saying he because, so, you know, male, males fucking play a lot of goddamn games. Anyways, she would be forced to use the ult. How much damage it deals and we get it done easily. Okay, and we've got the ult. Now, now, now the next thing, the next thing that's so important to pay attention to. Watch this Silver Wolf ult. Watch her, watch her, watch her battery down here. This is E1 Silver Wolf. You ready for the power of E1 Silver Wolf? Watch her fucking ult leader. Ready from Silver Wolf, straight up, putting the damage into Sam, not worrying about waiting for... Look at this shit, bro. That shit is crazy, bro. Straight to half, bro. Oh my god, dude. That's E1 Silver Wolf. And this is what I'm saying. People be trying to argue with me when I'm like, Silver Wolf sucks at E0. Silver Wolf sucks with E0. Silver Wolf's the most pay to win limited uh, character in the game because all of her shit is sold to you through her Eidolons. I don't be lying to y'all when I say this shit, guys. I'm always cooking. Application. We're just going straight in for it. And this Silver That's with the power of Silver Wolf's E1. It's going to have another And it perpetuates. Ready. By the time we do have access to his break bar anyway. And we do have that extra weakness applied. So we are set to break this guy if we need to. And getting some big damage out of that Akron with another 314k. There we go. So look. So Wolf's ult's about to be up. Control. Thanks She's to her E1. As much damage as Before she even goes again. Also, that's what's crazy. Look at this. Incredible. Yes, and boy, Ooh, I'm, that's bad RNG. If he would have hit Silver Wolf, her ult would have been up again. I'm definitely taking some damage. But so Scooby Doo's gonna to fix that problem. Okay. Now I admit, this Scooby Doo was a five head play by by Destiny. Five head. I would never put Scooby Doo on this team, but she put her on the team specifically to battery Black Swan and Silver Wolf, which is insane. Insane. I was going to say, we're, looks like we weren't going to use the skill there for a second. I was going to be worried about survival, but we are very safe now. We've this was such a good up. good we're play by her. Off. We got Silver Wolf's ult ready to go as well. Opting straight into it, maybe for... But look at this. Guys, look. You ready for this? Watch, watch, watch her, watch her shit. You ready for this shit? I didn't know if look at Silver Wolf's wait. meter. Does have another look. turn. Doesn't take a turn to... Nope. <laughs> that shit is like a magic trick, bro. That shit is so crazy, oh, man. So anyway, so we do get to general like no cooldown, guys. So. Literally no fucking cooldown on it, bro. Just yeah, just here you go. Here's half your energy back. We're pretty safe on that one. Absolutely. Gonna go ahead and use that Black Swan ultimate here. Really stacking up the Arcanist. It looks like the plan here. Do y'all see what I mean I'll now by why the point system's valid? It's valid for this no, type no, of no, shit because that's so attack, strong, though. man. That's so strong. And we're trying to generate energy on that. All them debuffs no, being applied some skill points. So for Acheron's ult, the defensive shred, 100% uptime, both enemies and shit. Doesn't have to use her skill here. Or maybe we are planning on the necessity to use a whole skill to heal uh is what we were lining up no we're using another basic okay we're up to four skill points so we're Ooh, perfectly dirty. fine on skill points and we're gonna be start taking some damage with that black swan here Yes, but we do have the Acheron ultimate available. The question is going to be, do we want to use it immediately or are we going to save it up for later? And I almost are a little bit concerned about this Huahua. Does she have enough healing output to counter Sam's massive healing debuff that he does on the team? And here there we go. go with that ultimate going into what a 500k ultimate getting the pop on the trotter getting some massive dot damage in there as well and even if we lose a unit here we're going to be pretty safe in my opinion uh we are at three stacks currently uh even if we take a bit of health damage we should be fine we will get the ultimate yeah I it's nice here on the silver wolf after this skill but you got to decide what you want to do because ho ho is going to run out of her buff so she will want to skill Okay, we are saving it for the Fuoho. Hopefully, we don't get dropped here. Getting straight into those ultimates from the damage taken, which is dude. That, the, the amount of Silver Wolf ult there, is actually absolutely wild. After the Silver Wolf, getting a good chunk of damage in, and where are we at? He's at top. But this is what I was trying to tell y'all guys. Like, this is why I say Silver Wolf is not that good at E zero. I, I literally, it's because of 
that what you're seeing right now at, at her E1 state. Her E1 state is a night and day fucking difference from her E0 state. Non-existent break bar, and I think we're pretty safe to get it here. We're at eight stacks on the Akron, and we have a Black Swan turn coming up. So I think that is going to be enough to get our ultimate and get the job done in this cycle. Absolutely, what an incredible run. The absolute All right, and you know, it's walk, finishing walk, it off with Akron and alive, style. Akron is going to bring us home for a ridiculously fast clear here, Vulcan. <laughs> All right, there <laughs> we go. Nice little overkill on that one, too. One cycle clear. And what wonderful showing from both teams. Oh, yet now that you see this, guys, we can bring back up the point system, and you'll come to find out that their three, their uh, our five cycle clear. Told you equals a three cycle clear because we stayed over uh we stayed under 12 points under the 30 point system. Their two cycle clear is actually going to equal what is it of a six cycle clear due to that point system. Hopefully y'all had a a good time watching me like analyze this shit and like you know shed some light on all of the insight. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.